Hey everybody and welcome back to the channel. So, it's no secret that I love engineers. I think they bring a great service to my team. Um, I've historically favored Lee's in this opening 10 seconds. It's pretty easy to see why. However, in this video, I want to take a much deeper look at Crawford because a lot of you guys have been telling me I haven't been fair to him, so I've put my practice in. Vehicle destroyed. The first thing I can tell you straight off the bat is that everybody loves a Crawford shot. It's not bad. Oh, nice. Mm -hmm. More about it at the appropriate time in the air section, but it does feel good to get praise from my fellow gamers for pulling off old school shots. Did you rip the one that just flew over me? Yeah. <laughs> nice. Magic. More of that to follow shortly. So, whilst Crawford wrecks some tanks here, let me quickly run through the structure of the video and its objectives. Firstly, in part one, I want to take a quick look at what are the hard actual differences between Lee's and Crawford as engineers, because there are some. And particularly for any new players or people who haven't played Lee's or Crawford very much before, it's worth putting them on the table. In parts two and three, I would like to look at the ground game and the air games respectively for both of the uh, engineers, but I want to put a much more focus on Crawford because I've covered Lee's quite a lot on this channel. I don't want to repeat myself, I want to move into something new. But I will need to show some Lee's gameplay to point out the differences that Crawford brings good or bad. And then finally, for each of those three sections, I'm going to award a score out of five for enjoyment and effectiveness. Guys, don't read too much into it. It's just a bit of fun. But behind all of that, I would also like you guys to consider something else throughout this video. It's no secret that DICE has said they want to make Leeds more ground focused, a statement I find very confusing. Not to prejudice the journey through the video, but cards on the table, Lee's is heroically good against ground vehicles already. And she certainly has a unique set of capabilities with the armor tracker and the ability to curve her TV missiles, or lissiles as I'll call them. Not to be rude or anything, but it actually strikes me as a bit nuts to suggest that Lee's needs to be made stronger against ground vehicles. But before I can come to too many conclusions, obviously, I've got to go take a look at Crawford and see what Dice is talking about. And I have had a couple misconceptions. First of all, Crawford all right, is that's... really good at range if you put the practice in. I see anything back here. Enjoy oh my god. Tank. I, I, I killed myself. I'm right to the tank. tank. Oh, yeah. Go to the. 130 is not a range to be sniffed at. Vehicle destroyed. Another misconception I had is that Crawford is very bad at AA. Yes, Lee's is the undisputed queen of AA for the engineers. And I've covered that to death on this channel, so I'm going to try and skip over that a little bit without completely avoiding the point. But again, with practice, Crawford is nuts. I don't think I mean, I don't know how many clips it takes to prove to people that this is actually very achievable. And in many ways, Crawford's better at getting a low-flyer jet than Lee's is, although it can be done with Lee's. To wrap out this introduction, what I found is that when you actually put the time in with Crawford, except that you're going to miss a lot of shots in the beginning while you're practicing and getting used to the RPG or the M5, there's really nothing in the air that you can't kill, even if they're quite far away. He just has a much higher skill ceiling at getting air shots than these does. But honestly, and I'll explain why through the video, I actually think both of them are in a very, very good place. Both in the ground game and in the air game. They each have their pros and cons, they each have their unique gameplay style. And honestly, in Season 7, if you are going to make changes to any engineer, Maybe focus a little bit more on Boris and give him a unique proposition relative to the other two. I mean, help me out guys here. Tell me if I've got this wrong, but he just seems like an inferior pick relative to Lee's or Crawford. Anyway, that's the pitch. That's the structure. That's the fun I'm going for. And that's also the slightly more serious message I've got going underneath the video. Lee's and Crawford are in good places. Please think carefully before any big changes. Okay, so let's get into it. The hard differences between the two and the first is a biggie. Lee's can carry 80 mines and C5 in addition to her launcher. Crawford cannot. Now, I very recently covered in a video the raw power this gives Leeds, particularly the ability to pull down any vehicle solo on her own. So I'm not going to repeat what I consider to be well-trodden ground, all of my best gameplays in that video. And just a quick plug, the YouTube algorithm did really screw me on that one, so if you haven't seen it, it's worth looking at. Let's just focus on what it means for Crawford. The big problem for Crawford is that when you come across large heavy armor like this that's stationary and not paying attention, you can't kill it quickly. <laughs> Just one more example to show what I'm talking about here. So now let's switch over to Crawford and look at it from his point of view. 
You snuck up on a vehicle that's stationary, you've got an RPG, but there's no quick way to kill it. You are forced into a protracted fight. And even here, when the vehicle didn't even fight back or take a shot at me, I had to hit three shots, and look how long it took. A direct consequence of this is the second hard fact, that, in my experience, it is far, far harder to catch and kill a spawn camping vehicle with Crawford than it is with Lee's. So even here when I'm parachuting in, I can't just land on top of them, throw down an AT mine and kill them. I've got to land all three of my shots and even then there's no guarantee I'm going to kill the vehicle. I mean, this gameplay you're seeing here is hardly a guaranteed kill, is it? At least I had the benefit of being able to steer out of the spawn zone and keep myself alive, even though now I've got no rockets. Now compare exactly the same situation to Lee's. Believe it or not though, that's not actually the biggest problem here. I've definitely noticed that more and more players are doing this, burying themselves in spawns surrounded, and I mean surrounded, by Irish trophy systems. Just look how many of these two put down. You couldn't even fire a launcher if you wanted to. As demonstrated. When you're playing as Crawford and you want to dig out the spawn campers, and you come across situations like this where there's a trophy system right next to them, there you go, you see it, I can't shoot at it, there's nothing I can do. We shouldn't really ignore them because jets and aircraft can't kill them either, so the only person who can do anything about it is Lee's. And when it comes to Crawford design, I really think they need to think about this. The conclusion on this point, Crawford has to work really hard if he wants to catch out a spawn camper, but it does look really cool when you do. Come on, you can make it. Oh well, never mind. All right, this brings us on to hard fact number three. Crawford has ammo issues and the Vulcan turret is not very good against vehicles. Crawford is in a better place relative to Boris in that he does carry an additional missile, whichever launcher you pick, but his ammo doesn't automatically regenerate like Lee's does, where if you don't have any missiles left, you can just sit it out for a few seconds and take another try. Just a little reminder to everybody who drives on the correct side of the road. Um, in a lot of games, the driver pilots, they're on the left-hand side, so when you shoot for them, keep that in mind. 40 years of conditioning to look on the right for the driver <laughs> makes me miss a lot of kills. Yeah, it was fun. I tried. Look, I absolutely adore Crawford's minigun. I mean, the minigun is a staple for every single 90s action movie, which I grew up with. And whilst I'm doing next to no damage in this fight, it does look cool as hell. But I have to admit, there is a part of me that wishes Crawford's minigun just did a bit more damage against vehicles. It would be a lot more fun and add a whole new dimension to his gameplay. Come on, Dice, give me armor piercing minigun rounds. You know you want to. Okay, let's move on to some positives for Crawford. Crawford can use a range of launchers, the RPG, the M5, and the Javelin. I favor the RPG, but the differences between the M5 and the RPG are very well documented. In a nutshell, the M5 has less projectile drop, you carry one additional rocket, and it's probably better suited if you favor going after aircraft because you've got that additional shot and it'll still one-shot them. The RPG has harsher projectile drop, but is much stronger against ground vehicles. Enemy aircraft spotted. Yep, coming back and hacking. Seriously, it never gets old doing that to Jetson, as you can hear, more fellow gamer admiration in the background. The Javelin is when it starts to get a little bit interesting. Emma, Emma. Don't forget to give it a little flick okay. after firing so you get a bit more height on it. So this gives Crawford the ability to use a guided launcher against ground-based vehicles. But it comes with all the negatives you would expect from it. It takes time to lock on and it can be mitigated by smoke. Or APS. Honestly, and this is just me, I found that when you put in a couple of hours with the RPG, there's really no need for a guided missile. They travel very quickly even after the 17% reduction, and they're very powerful. Yes, the Javelin has a damage bonus if somebody is soft landing for you for a top-down attack, but how often does that happen? However, if you're new and you want a bit of help, particularly hitting moving vehicles, Jav is good. Enemy neutralized. But take a look at exactly the same situation playing out and what the RPG can do. Oh, there's a ram behind us, ram behind us. Okay, 
Oh, nice shot. Timeless. Nice shot. I suggest putting your practice in with a shoulder mounted launcher. And of course, we have to address the biggest weakness the Javelin has. Unless someone's soft landing for you, you cannot shoot any air targets. Which means you are going to miss an awful lot of free lunches in this game. Recommendation, put a little bit of effort in, learn the M54 RPG. Hostile destroyed! Okay, this brings us nicely to hard fact number five. Crawford can take advantage of soft lamb locks. As you can see, I didn't need line of sight to lock on there, and once you've established the lock, if you give the RPG a little flick before you fire. Oh, this is my gun. Damn it. Guided missiles that can shoot around corners. Not bad. Let's see another one. There we go. The soft lamp really isn't to be sniffed at, and I wish it had more prominence in the game. It's just not very many rewards for people who are using it. But if you do have a friend or some unknown hero who's out there in the battlefield teeing up the shots for you, you can become extremely lethal. It also really increases the range of your shots, so check out this one here. I'm the best part of 200 meters away. All thanks to whoever was on the soft lamp. Right, hard fact number six. It's a little one, but it's worth knowing. Lisa's launcher has quite a good zoom on it. If you look through the zoom, you can spot enemy vehicles, players on behalf of your team. So all this took place in the space of one parachute drop. I spotted the incoming uh, helicopters. I spotted the uh, anti-air on the back line, and I took a quick snipe at the vehicle. Enemy vehicle neutralized. Because no one's ever watching for a missile coming from above. And you also get to have a lot of fun with snipers, people who pew pew at you. In fairness, this player started it by trying to snipe me in a parachute. That is a war crime, so uh, this is wholly justified, my friend. Target neutralized. Headshot as well. Right, as far as I see, as far as I know, those are all the hard differences between the two. Let me know if I've missed anything. Overall, because of Lisa's ability to carry the AT mine, the C5, and her ability to dig out spawn campus, I would say that she has quite a natural advantage over Crawford. So in terms of who's got the better kit, better abilities going into the fight, I'm going to give Lise four points because she can't do everything Crawford can, but I'm going to give Crawford three because he's missing a lot from his skill kit. I hope Dice can take a look at that. Okay, so we've arrived at the heart of the video and the moment where I expect Crawford to shine ground gameplay. So in part one and another video, we've already covered the AT mines and C5. Move on. We also know that these is very good at ride-alongs, being prone on top of a vehicle and providing additional support, both in terms of repair and additional shots. And these are really good ways to play her. But what these actually excels at in the ground game is actually a little bit dirty, and I'm expecting a few of you not to like this. When you're on the deploy map, take a quick look to see where the armor is. You see that vehicle right there? And drop in at the nearest spawn point closest to it. I think you know the rest. If two or more leases start ganging up like this, like you're seeing here, you can wipe out even the heaviest armor without ever putting yourself at risk. Lee specializes in the dirty long shots, and I'm afraid that's just the way it is. And again, remember people, they're saying they want to make Lee's more ground focused. <laughs> I'm really struggling with that one. The other thing that's patently unfair is the armor hunter perk. So once you take a shot of the vehicle and it disappears from your line of sight, it means absolutely nothing to Lee's because one, I can still see you as you're seeing there, and two, I can absolutely finesse my rocket straight into your back. I can even choose your weak spots. Vehicle neutralized. The other thing to keep in mind is that Lee's has a range of 450 meters on her Lissile, so she can pull off what I would call extreme max range shots. But not only do you not have line of sight, you're not even anywhere near the target that you're shooting at. You can even delay the shot by not deploying the afterburner to wait until defenses like APS have gone down. I'm not gonna lie, in making this video I have reflected a little bit on how I've played the game to date. This does seem a little bit unfair. But hey, don't shoot the messenger, I'm just pointing out what's possible. It's kind of like Dice saying that the railgun at all wasn't originally designed to snipe vehicles when actually that's exactly what it was designed to do. And then they act surprised when that's what people did. But despite all of that, how effective this style of gameplay is, I still think Crawford is better. And here we go. 
First, Crawford is ridiculously fast in high-paced fight situations. When playing Crawford, I saw opportunities that just kind of like split second which just came up that as a Leeds player, I, there's no way I could have captured them. Only Crawford had the ability to get them. Here's an example. No way Leeds could have moved that fast. Crawford's ability to basically pop off an instant shot and then get back into cover before there's much of a chance to reply makes him much better in close combat, really, really gritty situations. Especially if you don't have to stand there guiding the missile like Leeds, where you're just begging to get shot. You really can just grab the moment like this. Or Crawford needed to get the kill. The other thing that I really appreciate about Crawford's launcher, whether you use the um, RPG or the M5, is just how quick the projectile actually is. Destroyed. Combine that speed with no visual or audio warning that the missile's coming, even when you're doing a long shot like this, nothing they can do. This little sequence coming up is quite fun because I'm playing as Crawford and my friend's okay. playing as Lee's and we've decided to ambush a tour. Let's see who does better. The first hit was a cracker, but the driver rightly puts their APS up. Leeds goes in for the C5, but fails, gets taken out. And this is where speed counts. One, one, one up. Nice. So Crawford saves the day. We managed to take out the railgun, rescue our friend, and everything is great. Anyway, let's move on to the second reason why I think Crawford's awesome. The long shot. Now, granted, it's obviously not as good as Leeds' and you can't, you know, curve over objects, but it's still way better than I thought. So yeah, not just good in the close quick-fire situations, he's good at range too. I'm just leaving this in because I just admire how much the player must have been in the zone to not notice what I was doing here. Anyway, back to long shots with practice, it's much easier than you think. I can never tell if the APS is up on a burning ram or not. Really hard to see. Ram hunting with Crawford is becoming a favorite. Any of you who watch any of my earlier videos will know that one of the things I loved about Lee's was chasing the player who thought they got away, and I'm really pleased that you can still do the same thing with Crawford. With practice, you'll learn the projectile drop to be able to just catch the top of enemy vehicles, even when you don't have line of sight. I love that laugh. Right, this brings me to the third type of play with Crawford, what I call a hide and peek shot, for want of a better name. Basically, we take your shot, go prone in the terrain, be it bushes or hiding behind rocks so the player can't see who shot at them, and then slowly work them down. They hold more sectors than us. I know people give Battlefield 2042 a hard time, and I understand the history, but seriously, right now, show me a game where you battle a tank with an RPG in the middle of a tornado. Anyway, if you're going to go after the big arm of the big game, get used to lying flat on your stomach, otherwise you're going to get absolutely flattened when they see you just punch them in the nuts. Support package is ready. Alright, the last section I'm going to call Death From Above, where you are parachuting or use the pond hawk to take out the vehicles from the air. Crawford is actually very good at striking top down, you can get a lot of kills doing it. Lead isn't any different, but Crawford has his own unique fun way of doing it. What I really love with Crawford, and yes, I know Leeds can do it too, but I think Crawford's better, is the Pond Hawk. It is so much fun being a backseat RPG M5er. I was really skeptical when the Pond Hawk was first introduced, but uh, no, this is gameplay 100 for me. I adore it. 
Nice. The advantage Crawford has, though, is that if you're playing on your own, you need to change seats. He's far less likely to actually crash because you don't have to spend all that time looking down the TV missile lens. So he's much better at solo pawn talking than Lisa's. <laughs> I'll let them keep their secret of what they discovered there. Maybe oh, one yeah. day we'll show the world. But yeah, it's fantastic gameplay, and if someone's willing to fly you, it's great. Enemy vehicle down. An extra comma points if you're willing to fly for your friends so they can have some fun. Bottom. So noting all of that, I'm going to give Leeds four stars for her ground place gameplay, but I'm going to give Crawford five stars for his. After putting the practice in with him, I've realized what a demon he is. All right, this brings us to Antier, and like I said in the beginning, I've covered this to death on the channel, so 20 seconds to quickly summarize, please. Yes, she is, of course, the best engineer at Antier, and is not even open for discussion. I have covered her at length on this channel. Please do check out any of the videos if that is of interest to you. But to wrap it up, if you're up against top tier pilots, Lee's is the answer for ripping them down. What I would like to focus on this new is just how good, after putting in, I will admit, quite a bit of practice Crawford actually is at downing aircraft. So I've done a lot of jets, so let's take some choppers down. I was sad about that. I was sad about that too. Wasn't sad about that, that was a pretty damn good shot. It's huge fun catching out nightbirds being arrogant trying to farm you. Nice work. And like I said, the crowd loves it when you land the shots. Oh nice, very nice, very nice. One more, one more. This was actually one of my most cinematic moments in the game to date. So basically a nightbird sweat took me out from above and then uh, I absolutely loved the ending here. You have a dozer and um... I mean that's worthy of an Arnie 90s action movie that like they've seen from Commando. But in any case, if Leeds is a 5 and you want to scale it, Crawford's probably a 2, but just because of sheer damn flair and coolness, I'm going to upgrade that to a 3. He's low. He just pops smoke. Yep. Okay, so and to wrap this up, if I've added up correctly, Lee's has got 13 points and Crawford has 11. Not that it matters, guys, and please, don't take it seriously. When it comes down to just the toolbox and the effectiveness of actually getting the kills, be it on ground or in the air, then I have to give it to Lee's. She is the better engineer. But I do think that Crawford's got the edge in uh, ground-based fights. And unlike Lee's, you have to give him five points for cool. I mean, everybody loves an old-school battlefield shot. In any case, I'm really glad I picked up Crawford. Thank you to all of you who uh, nudged me to do so. It's fantastic to have a bit more variety in the gaming evening to be able to do something a bit different. But if you've never given Lee's, Crawford, or either a shot, I hope you pick them up, give them a try. And I'll leave you with this. For anyone who was uh, wishing DICE does make it on their promise to make Lee's more ground-focused, careful what you wish for. Okay, guys, catch you in the next one. Bye-bye. No!